Arteta has given us some big hints as to what his master plan for this season is going to be, and we can already notice some subtle innovations in how Arsenal are going to create their chances, including an even more fluid midfield, a more advanced role for Declan Rice, and looking to score goals from an area of the pitch that was long forgotten. Let's take a look. Arsenal fans will be hoping that this is the season they can finally dethrone Man City from the Premier League title. And while they haven't been the most active team in the transfer window, Arteta still has a number of excellent options at his disposal, and they look set to take Man City all the way. We're going to start this analysis by taking a look at Arsenal's structure during build-up, which has slowly become a staple of how Arteta wants to play and why they've been so dangerous going forward. So while Arsenal start their matches in a 4-3-3, this very quickly becomes a 3-2-2-3 shape, a very similar structure that we've seen in previous seasons and a very common structure in the Premier League in general. We recently did an analysis of Enzo Maresca at Chelsea and he is looking to implement the same exact structure in possession. However, there is a very big difference in how Enzo Maresca is using the box midfield and how Arteta is using the same structure because Arsenal are a much more fluid team and while there are four players in the center these four players can rotate a lot more freely than you would see in other systems. For example while we see in these situations here with Zinchenko as the inverted fullback in the center he could very comfortably move out wide with Partey in the center and Odegaard being the other holding midfielder with the box being created with maybe Declan Rice and Havertz up top with Zinchenko as the extra player out wide in this situation. And we can see this in a lot of their matches from preseason that every time they want to create this box shape in the center, it could be a different player that's creating this box. At the base of this structure is usually Partey and either Zinchenko and Odegaard, but in other matches you can get other rotations and other players in these positions. For example, in their game against Leverkusen with Jorginho instead of Partey, and in these positions you could end up with Ben White pushing further forward on the flanks because he didn't have to be in the back three, and you'd end up with different players creating the box in the center. Once Arsenal have created this box shape in the center is where we can start to see some of the more advanced rotations that they complete to move the ball up the pitch. And the first one is a very similar one that we saw from Enzo Maresca in our recent video. And that is that as the ball moves out wide into either Gabriel or Ben White as the back three, then Declan Rice or Odegaard will shift their position onto the flank to receive the ball away from the pressure and away from the midfield. The positioning of these two players is also very crucial because it's not before the midfield line. So they're not picking up the ball here because then there's no real advantage that Arsenal could gain because they're then the other team could simply shift over and cover this position. But the movement of Declan Rice and Odegaard is behind the second line of pressure, so they're often receiving the ball just past this midfield line, trying to create a 2v1 against the fullbacks. Then from these positions, as they move the ball out wide, then they're comfortable pushing and attacking into the half space. Now I also want to highlight the position of Declan Rice because last season we did see him pick up the ball in advanced positions past the opposition's midfield line. But from these positions he wasn't the most aggressive pushing forward and sometimes he would attack the half space but he was more comfortable adding support between the lines. However this season we've already seen on a number of different occasions how he attacks forward and is attacking the half space and it's allowing Arsenal to get so many more players forward and into the box. In fact, if we take a look at Declan Rice's play style from last season, we can see that his biggest function was a build-up director, meaning that he would often be involved in the first phase of play and help the team progress up the pitch. However, this season, I wouldn't be surprised to see him be more of a roaming playmaker, pushing forward and attacking the box a lot more frequently than we have seen in previous seasons. However, it's not just Declan Rice that is completing these runs in behind the defence, and a lot of Arsenal's midfielders are attacking in behind the defence from deep positions. And it is a move that is proving to be very difficult to stop because as these runs are not being tracked by the midfield they can often pick up the ball without being pressed in behind the defensive line. For example we can see this run from Trossard starting from an extremely deep position and none of the opposition's players are able to pick up the run and he's able to pick up the ball in behind the defence. But for Arsenal to take advantage of all these runs in behind, you also need a player that can spot these runs when they happen. And here's where the role of Zinchenko comes into the picture, who in my opinion has been Arsenal's most dangerous player during pre-season because of his positioning and because of his ability to pick out players on the run in behind. And we've already seen it countless times this pre-season with Zinchenko playing some excellent balls in behind for the forwards to chase. And it's something that I think Arsenal will take advantage of a lot more frequently this season. Now, as Arsenal move up the pitch and into the opposition's half, there is a slightly lopsided approach to their attacks. We can see that they still want to keep to this 3-2-2-3 shape, but if we take a look at the position of Ben White, he's much more comfortable overlapping on the right flank, 
while on the left it's usually Martinelli holding the width and there's a lot more players in the center and a lot of players attacking in the half space but on the right you get a little bit more of overlaps which gives Arsenal a number of different options they can exploit they can use crosses from Ben White on the right flank or they can use a lot of cutbacks on the left flank now this means that at the back they're comfortable with three players giving cover with for example Gabriel Saliba and Partey but it does free up Arteta to put seven players in the opposition's final third and they can exploit this in a number of different ways firstly with the wingers cutting inside a pattern you often see is these crosses onto the back post with Odegaard in these positions here and there's a lot of players that can attack from these positions and you often end up with three or four players ready to attack this cross into the box and from these situations we've seen Declan Rice try and knock it back into Havertz to try and score the goal but from other situations they're not just attacking these crosses into the box but they have a lot of support on the edge of the box as well now because Arsenal are creating their chances quickly it does mean that the opposition is dropping their defensive line very deep to try and cover the space in front of the goal but it is freeing up a lot of space on the edge of the box for example if we take a look at Arsenal's first goal against Bayer Leverkusen we can see that as the opposition is closing the space in front of the box it leaves so much more space for Zinchenko and Odegaard or whichever player they have in this position to finish off the move and it's a space that they've already exploited a number of times in pre-season matches and I think this is a willing plan from Arteta because there's a number of excellent players in these positions that can score long-range efforts. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Arsenal score a lot more goals from outside the box or from the edge of the box. With their cutbacks in these positions not necessarily being balls driven across the six-yard box, but more frequently looking for this space on the edge of the box for the players to finish off the move from these situations. Comfortable in the cover provided by the back three if the opposition is able to intercept these passes. And I do think all these forward rotations and Arsenal's ability to get a lot of players into the box will make up for their lack of a specific target man up top. Something that a lot of Arsenal fans have been calling for for a number of years. And because of this constant threat of balls onto the back post being attacked by a number of different players or layoffs onto the edge of the box with two or three players ready for the long range effort, I think it will mean Arsenal will have a number of different scorers this season and they won't need to rely on a specific player to get the vast majority of their goals. In summary, Arteta seems to be taking his philosophy one step further and Arsenal seem to be an even more fluid team than they were in previous seasons, with quicker attacks and a lot more forward rotations, being able to attack their box with a number of different players and can threat opportunities from a number of different positions and players. And on this point of players, although they've only signed Calafiori for the time being, Arsenal still have a number of different options and players that can mean that they can adopt different play styles depending on who is playing. In fact, if we take a look at some of the key positions that might be up for contention this season, there's so many different options for Arteta that give Arsenal different feels depending on who is playing. The first one to consider is the position of Calafiori as well, because it's still uncertain if he's going to be playing as the left back or as one of the centre backs. And like we said earlier, I think it will be difficult for him to integrate into the team. But if he does make it into the team as one of the two centre backs, then again, these central rotations mean that he could also create this box midfield in the centre, because we know that he's very comfortable pushing forward and adding numbers in the box and I think the position of Calafiori can be a really dangerous one if he's able to work it into the team because as we saw during the video Arteta wants a lot of runs from deep positions and there's no better player that's going to do this than Calafiori as he's very comfortable picking up the ball making a pass and then attacking from a really deep position something that we saw him do countless times for Italy but specifically for Bologna last season. But there's other players as well that can change Arsenal's playstyle and unlock other spaces. For example, if Jorginho starts ahead of Partey, then he's very comfortable dropping between the centre-backs, meaning that Ben White can push further forward and doesn't have to be used as the back three during build-up, and can add more support to Saka earlier on in the move. But let me know in the comments down below what you think of this Arsenal team, and do you think this is the season where they can finally dethrone Man City? And thank you so much to Onieka Michael for becoming the latest member of the Football Meta channel. If you want to help support the channel and get a shout out at the end of every video, then please consider hitting the join button down below. Thanks for watching.